Hello and welcome to this week's tutorial. Uh, today we're going to look at a bit of video editing with Blender. Um, I'll just sort of go over the basics of how to get um, the proper files into Blender and some basics on um, some editing and uh, some effects. Um, so we'll go straight into it. Um, first thing you want to do is change the layout because this isn't very good for uh, video editing. Uh, we can change it to the video editing here. And this is pretty good. Uh, you've got the preview window here. You've got the uh, strip editor here. Um, I believe it's called the video sequence editor. Um, and you've got the timeline down here. And over here is the graph editor, uh, which I tend to change to the properties panel. Um, and that just sort of, it's a basic video editing suite. You can change the frame rates and stuff. And the output settings here. See what's going on. And do your work here. Um, so the first sort of big thing to note is that Blender doesn't handle big AVI files very well, or big video files very well. It tends to crash uh, when you're sometimes when you're editing, sometimes when you're rendering, um, and it's just sort of I don't know exactly what the issue is, but it doesn't really like them. Um, so what you, the safest thing to do um, is get a little program called Virtual Dub. Um, it's this one. Um, it's quite good. Uh, it does sort of everything that I need it to, and it does other stuff as well. Um, it's, it does some video editing itself. Um, but all we need to do is load in the clip, which I've got here. So you can just drag and drop. And we're going to change it into an image sequence, which I've already done here. Um, I've already done sort of exported it, because it takes about five or six minutes for it to go through. So I wasn't going to make you sit through that. But to get it to do that, um, in virtual dub, you can see you got the preview of everything that's going on. You got the time slider down here, um, some buttons down there. So to do the uh, image sequence, go File, Export, and then Image Sequence. Nice and easy. Um, you can select where you want it to export to the directory, uh, and put a name on it, set the file type and stuff. Um, so it's fairly straightforward. And then to get the audio clip, which I haven't done yet. File and then save just WAV will do it. Um, and I'll just set a quick name, I'll call it video editing audio, and then just hit enter to save that out. And then that's all we really need video dub for, or virtual dub at the, for at the moment. Um, I'll put a link in the description for you so you can download it. So we've got it here. Um, um, we've got the audio file, we've got the clip, and we've got the image sequence, so we're not going to be using the clip anymore, but that's just to know that we've still got it there. And it's best to keep it, just in case, you know, something goes wrong and you need to create everything from scratch again. Uh, Shift A is your add menu, just like in the 3D viewport, and then select image, if you want to bring in some images. I mean, you can see, if you hold your mouse over, add an image or image sequence to sequence it, so it's perfect for what we want. Then navigate to where your image sequence is, and it's best to have it, there's just the sequence in its own folder. So you can just hit A, select everything, and add image strip. And it's nice and easy like that. Um, you'll notice that it's sort of added it off to the right a bit, because um, this is at zero. So what, you, um, what happens is Blender adds in all your clips um, or strips at the uh, mouse cursor, so wherever you hit Shift A, that's where it's going to be. That's just something to note, um, but it's easy enough to move things back to the right place. And you can set the start frame um, is, you know, basically where everyone wants to start from. And changing the start frame doesn't adjust the length of the clip or anything, because that, that's where the length is for. So um, that's an easier way to sort of move things around. Um, and then I want, obviously, my audio to come in as well. So Shift A and then Sound, and I'll just go up one and select the audio file. So now that's in, um, and that one's starting at frame zero. So I'll just move that up to one for consistency. And you'll notice that the audio files um, might be longer than your um, image sequence because. Um, I did render the video at 10 frames per second, um, and that it's just sort of a good frame rate for me when I'm uh, recording uh, this sort of footage. Um, it 
keeps things generally nice and smooth, but um, doesn't create too big a file size. Um, I could render or record at uh, 30 frames per second, but everything would be three times as huge and it would take forever to upload. So it's just sort of balancing the um, quality versus uh, file size. Now, to sort out the length of the audio file, first thing you want to do is set the frame rate to match the video. So, I'm going to go to custom, change it to 10. Um, if you're sort of doing this with your own video clip, um, you probably won't have to worry about this, but it's a good thing to know anyway, just in case. So, everything's going at 10 frames per second now. Um, and the best way to sort of figure out what's going on with the audio file is to, with it selected, over here in the uh, edit strip panel, um, you'll see draw waveform and just turn that on and you'll see a black line appears and that's got the actual waveform on it. Um, it's a fairly quiet audio file so you can't see a lot what's going on but you can see that it just stops there and that's the end of the video clip. So what we can do is just left click to put the time slider there and hit K with the uh, strip selected and then we can just select this second bit and just X to delete it. Nice and easy. Um, so now it all matches up um, and it looks pretty good. What we can do is turn on audio scrubbing and AV sync and frame dropping um, and that just sort of allows the audio to sync up and it allows you to grub along like this and hear that there is audio play. Uh, quite useful um, for when you're doing um, lip sync and stuff like that. Or even when you're just doing video editing and you want to make sure the audio matches up with the video. Um, and the frame dropping, just um, when you hit Alt-A, it might sometimes drop a frame in this preview window just so that it um, keeps playing at the correct rate. Um, but it, it just sort of, because uh, you know, your computer always can't keep up with sort of figuring out what's going on here and then showing it there. So that's just, um, it's just a useful thing to keep things going. Um, and we need to set the end time, I'll set that to 350. So I've got plenty of um, space within the video editor, maybe even 400, so I can put in some effects and stuff. Um, and a basic um, sort of what would, be, what would you call it a effect is just a fade in and a fade out um, and just sort of even a fade to black is what I'll show you um, so I'll sort of go okay where do I want to cut it so I'm moving it around there and then next I'll be grabbing it and extruding it so just here I'll cut it and I'll put in a fade in, fade out. So I've got both of these selected and I'll just hit K with my mouse in the sequence editor. And then I can grab both of these clips and just move them apart. Um, so you can see that sort of it's going and then it's nothing and then it's going. I don't know if you can hear the audio um, coming sort of into my ears at the moment, but I will put up this clip um, for you to download and play with. Um, in case you need some sort of source file to um, edit. So we've got um, two sort of separate uh, cuts and what we want to do is add in a fade in and fade out, so a fade to black. So first thing we want to add in is colour and the default colour is black which is perfect for what we're doing. Um, and you sort of got to decide how long do I want it to be black for. I think in about five frames so at the moment I'm at frame 95, so I'll make sure I'll move both of these to start at frame 100. And then I want this one to start at frame 85. And you can see here, um, I can't really move my mouse to it, but on the left of the clip at the bottom of it, that number is the frame that the start of the clip is on. And the number at the top and right of the clip is where the end of the clip is. So I know that 10 frames before 95 is going to be 85 and the, the default size for the color clip is I believe 25 frames yep. so um, it gives us 10 frames of what will be 
fade to black, five frames of just black, and then ten frames of it fading back, uh, fading back. So that'll be at ten frames per second, two and a half seconds of the fade, which might be fairly slow, I suppose. You probably want to have it quicker than that, but just for the sake of showing you, uh, this is how I got it. So to add in the uh, fade effect, select the clip and the colour. Um, it doesn't really matter what order you select them in at this point. And then Shift A, and then Effect Strip, and Cross. Cross will do it perfectly fine. And you'll see as I scrub along that it fades to black. And then you can select these two, Shift A, and then Cross. So we've got the fade in and fade out. So it fades out and it fades back in. Um, and I think that just about covers the basics of video editing. Um, there's not much more to add to it than that. So um, I hope you learned a little something. Um, leave some comments and stuff. Subscribe if you like it. Hit the like button if you like it. Um, I have got a Facebook page, which I talked about in the last video, uh, Twitter and stuff, so be sure to check out my other videos as well, um, and let me know what you think. Thank you.